My name is Jennifer Harris and I live in Akakeek, Maryland. I represent myself, my husband, and my two young children who are just outside, and we are eight-year residents of Whitehall Forest. My primary reason for being here is that I am a concerned parent. My children are four and two, and I'm worried about the funding for our schools in the coming years. I'd like to make a couple of quick points that I made to the school board last week that I encourage you to also be aware of. Superintendent Hyde has proposed many cuts to the classroom that will hurt our children. When I did a little research, I learned that more than 700 PGCPS staff make more than $100,000, and only 51 of those employees are directly involved in educating our children. Many administrative staff are mid-level bureaucrats who make the same salary as you, Mr. Baker, and have far less responsibility for our county's future. Please work with Dr. Hyde to look at where else cuts can be made in administrative areas before our classrooms. In making this point, I also want to let you know that my husband and I are public servants and other government entities who for the past three years have endured furloughs, increased health care costs, no pay raises, and no cost of living increases. We are Ivy League educated, highly experienced professionals who could certainly work elsewhere for a six-figure salary. We chose public service because we love it. And we understand when times are tight, we must make sacrifices for the greater good of the organization. We need to make sure that our school administrators are doing the same and not crying wolf by putting valuable programs on the chopping block to get the state's attention. Because if the state doesn't deliver, all that is accomplished with these cuts is stealing our children's, uh, children's education and robbing teacher of their joys in the classroom. My other concern is making sure that the county takes further actions to strategically align budgetary priorities with your campaign promises and the pledge for Prince George's County. In particular, I want more action on moving toward an open and transparent government. I am a government communications professional, and I know for certain that the Office of Information Technology and Communications should be working together with your key staff and your administration on this objective. It will require a little money, but mostly a lot of dedication to get it done. Here are some initiatives I would like to see. Record and post all government meetings online. We're the only jurisdiction in the area who doesn't do that. If I can't be at council, commission, or committee hearings, at least I can know what's going on. Maintain regular dialogue with residents as you're doing tonight. This hearing is a good opportunity, but as you know, some will not be able to seek out meeting information or dig through press releases on a website to find out. Use your social media sites like Facebook and Twitter, not only to post information, but to engage in conversation about county issues, because that's what social media is all about. Set up web common boards so if residents can't attend meetings to provide input, we can at least submit them online for consideration. I am very happy that your ACI advisory board has already done that as we explore ethical issues in this county. And I'll leave it at that. The final thing I do want to say is let's get to 311 as our final goal. And that's where we ultimately, I know you want to go, but I will pay more money for that. Good evening, Mr. County Executive. My name is Donald Hansels. I'm representing myself and the Birchwood Clearview Community Association. I'm here to speak on behalf of my family and the use of Oxney Library to my family. I'm a father of three, unemployed at this time, and I'm using the library resource to the best of my ability to reinvent myself to start a new career. I have a three-year-old daughter that I take to the library every Thursday, and the staff of the Oxley Library are wonderful with the story time. She is maturing, growing, and learning to read at, at, at a very early age, as, as what has been said been proven to my own eyes. So I took this personally to come to this meeting to tell you not to cut no phone into the library. I'll make a personal suggestion that you can charge a little fee for the library card and for maybe privatizing some of the services of the library because the library is used now by a lot of people who are inventing their careers or changing workforce and going through hard times. Oxley Library is a very important library to my family. I've been living in the community for over seven years and I love it and I support the staff here. Thank you for your time. Sir. And I'm also pleased to announce that we have joining us tonight uh, Delegate Jay Walker from the 26th District. Jay.
Donna Warren. <coughs> County Tech Baker and other officials and employees of Prince George's County, thank you very much for coming to Harmony Hall. I have lived in this community for 20 years, and for often, the South County has felt like the orphan child. I'm quite sure all of you will say that. Thank you very much. I come here because often we have resources, and because we're such a vast area, people can say they're cut, and when you're in the more populous area and you have more services, you feel it, but that means you just gotta go down the street. For here, cuts in the library services means if something happens to Baden, that means you've got to come up to Surratt. If something happens to Akakee, you've got to go to Surratt or Oxon Hill. It's just the same way with all services, whether it's the fire or the police station. Don't get me started on the police station that was covered and promised back with Jim East that was on city council. But, mm, now, 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 now. <laughs> But I also want to thank you for having transparency and for offering us this opportunity to come before you. I want to thank all of you for coming out. This is one of the largest appearances I've seen for a budget hearing. And you are to applaud yourselves and thank yourself and pat yourselves on the back. And next time, bring one. But also, and maybe you can speak to the county council and I believe a little bit of interactive. How many of y'all have been to a county council meeting? Raise your hand. That's not a lot of people. Okay. How many of you would go if county council had meetings at night? How many of you would go if they had a county council meeting on a Saturday? That's transparency. That truly is transparency. And if you can address that to the county council, to maybe start thinking about having meetings when people who work can come because at nine to five, most people are at work and lobbyists and lawyers work and they can make it nine to five. Everybody else has got to take off. It shouldn't cost people money to be involved in their county government. Thank you. I'm William Cabot, Vice President of IHAC, the Federation of South County Civic Associations. As we discussed with you during the election campaign, the IHAC Board urges you to adopt zero-based budgeting, especially during this year, first year in office. Zero-based budgeting requires that budget require requires that budget requests be justified in complete detail on each division uh, chief starting from a zero base. Such scrutiny of proposed expenditures uh, is always important, but especially when millions of dollars in cuts from current budget levels must be found to balance income and expenditures. The advantages of zero-based budgeting include these. Results of efficient allocation of resources, as in directly based on needs and benefits, drives managers to find cost-effective ways to improve operations, detects inflated budgets, identifies and eliminates wasteful and obsolete operations, forces reevaluation of every outsourcing contract, forces cost centers to identify their mission and their relationship to overall costs. A related issue is the need for the county to practice effective code enforcement. The Department of Environmental Resources has the responsibility for course in code enforcement, but has shown a lack of political will and a lack of resources to meet its responsibilities. Failure to do so results in significant losses of re revenue to the county, as well as damaging our image. The St. Barnabas Beach Road Industrial Study done in 2010 showed that 242 businesses out of a total of 449, or 54%, did not have valid use and occupancy permits. That not only is a zoning ordinance violation, but also represents lost revenue from unpaid fees for those permits. 
pro project those findings for the county as a whole, and one cannot but wonder how many inspectors' salaries can be paid with income for proper enforcement. For your convenience, I've appended to my written testimony the executive summary of that St. Barnabas Beach Road industrial study. And again, we urge you to adopt zero-based budgeting. Thank you. So education is my top priority. The Prince George's County Public Schools is an absolute priority. The education of our children is critical for the future of this county. Prosperity is dependent on a first-class school system for all children as well as the future of the county. Businesses will only stay and come to the county if there is a good school system for their workforce and for their employees. There must be an internal, external audit of the funds expended by the school system. There has been a substantial waste of funds on consultants, especially from the Brody Foundation. The system has a history of establishing new positions, hiring people, and then failing to incorporate the expenses of personnel in future budgets causing huge financial deficits and extensive problems with personnel on board. Reduction of teachers in the classroom, furloughs for teachers, and increasing class size are all negative for the health of our school system. We can decrease the size of administration and place our emphasis on preserving teachers and low class size for elementary, middle, and high school. We all together must pursue the governor, governor and other state elected officials to reduce cuts in state funding. My second priority is the memorial library system. Libraries are currently used extensively by our students who are part of the digital divide, who do not have computers in their homes. The computers in all the libraries are in constant use after school hours for homework and research by students. The major libraries across the county are used daily by the elderly and the youth in this county. They enhance the literacy for our total population. Cuts are counterproductive for our youth and our elderly who depend on the libraries. Their hours have already suffered severe cutbacks and cannot support any further cuts. My last initiative or concern is security community, Secure Communities Initiative Act. The County Council voted a resolution several years ago not to participate in law enforcement of federal laws in the county. That means our, our local law enforcement officers are prohibited from assisting federal law enforcement in enforcing federal law. Deportation of people for misdemeanors has caused severe problems for families in the county. Montgomery County does not do that. Public safety is critical for all, but the preservation of families of immigrant families is humane. They, these are very difficult financial times with substantial loss of revenue. We must move forward to find and create other sources of revenue than real property taxes. Thank you. I would like to leave my written statement. Dave Turner. County Executive Baker, uh, Mr. Hammer, I want to endorse uh, Ms. Dillard and other statements about the funding question for the libraries. Um, now is the time for a county historic preservation bond bill. Public investment in private sector and historic tourist attractions accompanied by the salvaging of important old commercial buildings and significant older homes has driven the current financial success of the counties that surround Annapolis, Alexandria, Arlington, as well as historic St. Mary's and Colonial Williamsburg, here and now. And thanks to the work of hundreds of historic preservationists, we have saved such jewels, whether they be an ancient Indian village site 150 yards from this room, or 
important houses crafted by African-American owners in our towns 100 years ago. But at our monthly Historic Preservation Commission meetings, the current owners of these landmarks ask how can we financially rehabilitate such sites in ways that will make Prince George's the most important historic and tourism-rich county surrounding D.C. On a tiny scale, we have carefully and successfully launched grant programs and have used bond bills and public monies to experiment with ways that a county agency like your HBC can help make Prince George's the premier African-American heritage county for tourism in the U.S. This year, we've completed the design of low interest of a low interest revolving loan program to provide bridge loans to Prince George's willing to step up to the plate and save buildings, communities, and sites. Now your HPC is ready to begin a grants and loans program to individuals who will help this county capitalize on our historic attractions. HPC can help match a bond bill that would provide its grants committee with meaningful dollars, but we need your help. As Disney's decision to place a heritage tourism hotel at National Harbor indicates, we have a chance to take a slice, a slice of this lucrative tourism industry, as well as to save buildings that will be important to African American citizens for centuries to come with your help. Therefore, we seek your permission to work with Mr. Zemlo, Justin Williams, and Montez Anderson to quickly enact this county investment bond bill. On a different note, I stand in favor of Senator Anthony Muse and his request that improvement along Indian Head Highway not surrender its place in line for state highway dollars in Prince George's. The strip of our county that faces the Potomac River, Old Town Alexandria National Airport, National Harbor, and Washington, D.C., is our county's handsome front door to visitors and future investors. And right now, the interchange locations that would be used for overpasses remains unbelievably undeveloped by careless planning. If we act soon, we won't have to undo expensive mistakes in order to improve Indian Head Highway. Thank you. teaching in Prince George's County for over 20 years. In these difficult financial times, I am asking that you continue to put children first and make education a priority. Policy, policy makers are responsible to be selective about how money is spent. The decisions you make today will have a lasting effect on the children and future of Prince George's County. How will we as educators be able to meet the diverse needs of our students without the necessary funds to ensure that children are receiving what they need to succeed? If we aren't able to meet their needs today, there will be no tomorrow. We are not asking for needed raises. We are not asking for new materials. We are asking that you not take away our successful programs and our competent trained professionals. I would like to discuss reading and recovery, which is a short-term, first-grade intervention with proven results in preventing illiteracy. Reading and recovery actually saves this county millions of dollars each year. However, if Prince George's County Council does not make education its number one priority, this program and many others will be lost forever, affecting millions of students. Brain research shows that the critical window of time in which children must learn to read is about six years old. 